Okay, so I have a actual alarm clock setting for 11.59 now because of all the midnight stuff that Taylor has been releasing lately. That's where my life is. Have you seriously actually gotten up at midnight every night and checked, like, Twitter? No, 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 not every night. The nights that I know she's releasing. Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant that you, like, did this every night and we're just waking up at midnight every night to be like, did Taylor release something? <laughs> and I was like, uh. No, I, I've only done it three times. I Or maybe four. I don't know. Um, I did it when she released Look What You Made Me Do because, I mean, I was just hype. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I didn't even need the alarm, honestly. And then I did it for Gorgeous. And then I did it for the music video, mm. like, last night. <laughs> or was it last night? Yeah, last night. Oh, I thought it was two nights. Oh, oh, no, it was Thursday at midnight. It's at 11.59. Yeah. Midnight would have been Friday. No, it was midnight. Mm. So, pissed at her, but whatever. Mm. My bad. That's <laughs> actually really funny. I've just woken up the next morning and, like, listened to them slash watched the video. Yeah. That's what I did this morning. So, here's the deal. Taylor Swift. Uh, all the reputation hype. My gosh. So, it's been three years now since her official release of 1989. Which Are you serious? I have... Yeah. Oh, God. It does not feel like that long ago. All right. Whatever. Continue yeah. on. She released it in, um, actually, today, three years ago. That's weird. <sighs> on this day, three years ago, she released 1989. It's meant to be. We were meant to film yeah. this, record this pom- podcast. God, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and you even said, God, Lord. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah. So, I have some 1989 just kind of, like, fun facts just for the, the sake of it. It was actually the most successful pop album of all time. Really? So here's some records. Yes, of all time. It's insane. First woman to replace herself at number one with... So she was number one with Shake It Off, and then a month or so later, she replaced herself with Blank Space. Mm -hmm. Taylor became the only artist in history to put out three albums, 1989, Red, and Speak Now, that have each sold over a million copies in one week. 1989 earned her three awards at the 58th Grammy Awards, including her second album of the year win, first being Fearless, making her the first woman to win the award twice. So, I mean, I'm, there's just endless. That's, you know, just the tip of the iceberg, but those ones I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, everyone's expecting greatness, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, nothing less from... Our dark queen. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Our queen. How can you make like follow up 1989? There's nowhere to really go but down. I mean, is that just the pessimist in me saying that, or do you do you think? See, that? I take it in a different way. I say there's no way to go but like to something else, which I think is why you see like the three singles she's released are so different than 1989 because like if she had just come out with like the same kind of album people would have been like whatever so like i feel like she had to like go in a different direction for it to like still kind of be you know either that or it's gonna go downhill yeah i mean what i what i said to my mom when look what you made me do came out is i said the biggest mistake she could have made is to make an extension of 1989 with the new album yeah because like that would have just been as you said like that would have been there's nowhere to go but down so i feel like she really needed to take it in the there's nowhere to go either down if i keep the same or change and then i have the possibility of being at that level or higher yeah and that's what, actually one of the great things about taylor because i mean a, a lot of people who aren't super fans will just look or listen to the music and just be like oh it all sounds the same but when you actually you know study the albums like i do i don't know about you but um, all of her albums offer something different. Yeah. Well, even, like, her sound in general, because, you know, you have um, her first two albums, which were definitely a lot more country feel, and then now she's completely moved into the pop world. And so, mm-hmm. like, I think she already has that kind of knowledge of, 
I can't do the same album twice, so I need to change it up. Yeah. But, I mean, I'd even say that I, Taylor Swift, you know, her debut album, and Fearless don't offer the same sounds. Mm-hmm. I, I think that she... It, it's, it's kind of funny because people were so surprised when she did this, quote, complete switch to pop, but I never saw it as a complete switch. I don't think, you know? I never saw her as, like, 100% country. Ever. I mean, maybe with her first album, yes. But even half yeah. of those, I still kind of saw as more of a poppy country. I never, con- I never considered, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, like a pop country. Like, You Belong With Me, yes, I can, I can hear the banjo in the background, but I never considered that, like, like, oh, that's country. You know, it always seemed like more mainstream type music mm-hmm. coming out of her. So I, it honestly didn't surprise me that much. Yeah, not really. I mean, she's definitely gone 100, like 180, like away from that country vibe that she had because yeah. 1989 had none of that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's what she's always said that she has a problem with Red. Which, I mean, she loves that album. She's proud of it. But she's always said that, like, it seems like you're listening to dubstep on, uh, what is it called? I Knew You Were Trouble. And then the end of the album is Begin Again. And it's got that country vibe again. And it's like, you don't really it's know. It's confusing. It, yeah, it's confusing. And so the one thing that she always says about Fearless and 1989, which honestly I think are her two best albums, and so when she said this, I was like, okay, that makes sense, is that they are sonically cohesive albums. So, like, Mm -hmm. you're not jumping from one, like, you know, type of music to another Mm -hmm. within the album. It's like you listen to 1989, and it, quote, all sounds the same, but not in a bad way. You know what I mean? It's like in a cohesive, like, it all belongs together on the same album kind of way. Yeah, and so does Fearless. And I think those are the two best albums that she's ever released. So. Yeah. But this is more about reputation. So (laughs) I thought that I'd just go through the timeline of of all the reputation stuff that we've gotten. Sure. And then, um, oh, you know what I just realized? Mm -hmm. We did not introduce ourselves. (laughs) hi i'm emily hazard and i'm becca anderson and we suck at this no (laughs) this is (laughs) and surprisingly this is is not our first podcast oh no it's not at all this is our actual second podcast because we do a Grey's anatomy podcast called Grey's anatomy uncut and we found ourselves wanting to talk about other things on the air which if you listen to that podcast you'll you'll see and we just really wanted that one to be about Grey's Anatomy so we just made another one where we can talk about anything we freaking want okay so we just like to talk so yeah we like to hear ourselves talk we just like to have long conversations with each other about random crap that we both really really care about and we decided that the world needed to hear it too (laughs) that's true (laughs) Before, actually, though, before this, we talked once a week for, like, over an hour about, like, this. So, this was, this was our life, and now we're just recording them. So. For everyone else. Nothing's really changed. Yep. So, let's go through the reputation timeline now that you know who we are. (laughs) So, I kind of wrote this bolded list. Um, Clear, Taylor clears all her social media which apparently was hugely shocking. I never really followed her on social media. Didn't really care. I was about to say, I never really followed her, so honest to God, I never noticed. People were just like... I didn't notice until people I told know. me. Like, it was like in the news, like all the like, like it showed up on my like Facebook like feed, like Taylor Swift deletes all social media. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then she releases the snake videos, the infamous snake videos, which that got me hyped because I was like, she's doing something. I was like, something's going to happen. That just got me creeped out. I hate snakes. <laughs> and then um, within a few days, we got the album title. We got the release date of the album and the cover art. And so my first question is, what were your first reactions to the cover art for the album? Um, well, let me pull it up first so I can like... Oh, come on. You haven't memorized it? Well, 
I don't want to look like an idiot and say something wrong on live. We already do. On live. It's okay. Air. Taylor Swift reputation cover. I kind of like it it's definitely different than a lot of her other but then again none of her album covers have really been the same i think the two um, that look the most alike are um fearless and speak now yeah but i mean besides that i mean it's pretty simple like you just have the newspaper clippings on the one side black and white black which and is white. Cool. the font definitely like the way reputation that font to me looks like a tattoo kind of font like someone would get that like tattooed like on their bicep or something (laughs) it looks like newspaper that's what i thought well the newspaper no but like the font that reputation is written in at least on the version that i'm looking at (laughs) maybe it's the wrong version i think it's supposed to but it's like 100 percent like i've seen people with tattoos in that font (laughs) yeah um the the just the look of her herself first thing i thought of was like whoa that's 80s i don't know why i Mm, i have no like i have nothing i'm basing this on but it looked and felt 80s to me to me even though it's probably not to me like almost looking at her she looks very like simplistic you know like there's like i mean her hair just like like almost on top it looks like she's just like got out of a shower the shower or something because it almost Mm -hmm. looks wet I mean, like, she's definitely wearing makeup, but besides the lip, like, there's not too much. So, and, like, she's just wearing kind of, like, a sweater. Yeah. You should look up the color version of the album cover. Like, just type in, like, or try to find it. I don't know what you would type in. Well, that's not helpful. (laughs) Just add color to the bottom end of it. Color. Oops, I wrote cooler. Is it the, like, one with, like, a feather on it? No, just literally type in reputation cover colored. I did. But and you'll get it. came up with one with, like, a feather. No. Well, my point is, is that I think it looks really good. <laughs> I, I'm a huge Taylor fan. First time I saw it, I was like, oh, damn, she's back. My girl. Um, second thought was, so this is going to be dark. Yeah. Yeah. Or definitely like, like, do more you like of the an edge. The like edgy, yeah, yeah. Do you like the name reputation? I kind of do because I mean, at least with two of her songs and the videos that have come out with, she's definitely make a statement about what she wants her reputation to be. And so I think mm. that naming her album Reputation kind of fits that. To me it almost seems like she's trying to like rewrite her reputation. Which I feel like is why she called it reputation with being it like this is who I am and kind of thing instead of just like blatantly being like naming her album like this is Taylor Swift like mm-hmm. which was her first album. Yeah I think like I couldn't think of a better title for it. The one thing I'll say about the title reputation is that like I thought we were kind of past this like I thought Blank Space was a song where she took all of the reputation that people have said about her and wrote a song from the that point that of view. crazy girl's perspective and then i thought shake it off was kind of like a the same well, kind of thing i mean like, i don't i don't really care i'm just gonna shake I was gonna it say off basically whatever like you an say. fu kind of song it kind of is just in a fun way yeah. and now it's it's like we're kind of back to that mm-hmm. again three years later see and that's so it, i think one or two songs kind of address it because there definitely has been more stuff like recent like in the past three years like since stupid snake those were released so i get her wanting to like address some of that stuff i just hope it's not like every song is like here's my reputation Mm -hmm. like you know what i mean like i feel like if she really really like goes for that like edgy reputation like theme i feel like it could get very redundant yeah if she keeps releasing stuff about her reputation yeah because i almost feel like with the three we have so far like look what you made me do like when that came out i was like holy shit this is a huge statement piece you know like that really got it but then like ready for it kind of came out again and i was kind of like okay like it's a good song but for me the music video like it was a good music video but i was kind of like all right 
I think she's done. I need, I think she needs to stop with the whole like addressing her reputation thing because mm-hmm. I feel like everyone's going to get really tired of it. Yeah. Which is kind of where I feel like well, gorgeous comes in. Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. So like then after, you know, all that release stuff, look what you made me do comes out sometime someday I didn't even look it up at midnight. I got up at midnight to hear it. Uh, what were your first reactions to hearing the song? Um, honestly, at first I was like, this is a little creepy. Um, for me, what really helped and I think changed my viewpoint of the song was one reading, um, cause Emily actually sent me an article that had like all that went into like depth about like a lot of the meanings and stuff behind the lines. And so that helped. And I also thought that the music video helped it a lot. Yeah, so hold off on that, though, because we're we're going to talk about the, the video. Yeah, so, like, but. at first, I wasn't sure about it, but it it grew on me. It's now, like, my favorite song that's, like, her sing- that, like single now so far mm-hmm. off of this album. So my first reaction was, this is a great song with a crappy chorus. <laughs> that was the first thing that yeah. I thought of. I was just like, okay, so, like, I like the verses. They're okay the pre-chorus is freaking amazing Mm -hmm. that's my that's got to be one of my favorite taylor swift sounds the i got stronger i got harder in the nick of time that's i I hope i think that's right i don't know whatever i'm i'm already too tired for this and and i love the bridge but the chorus is just like literally just the same thing said over and over and over again Mm -hmm. to writes it fred and you know, I have to say it ha- it is growing on me. Like, I don't mind it now. But just my first reaction was like, this song could be so amazing if it had an amazing chorus. But now, you know, I'm okay with it. Do you think like a, a, um, like a really like wordy chorus or something could have been too much for it though? Well, I think the the kind of secret, or not the secret, what is the word I'm looking for? The way to look at it is like... What does she actually mean by look what you made me do? Because I think if there was some sort of like deep meaning from that, it would help me understand why she says it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or it's like, look what you made me do. It's the same thing with Out of the Woods. She said that the chorus of Out of the Woods is just, are we out of the woods yet? Over and over and over again. And her explanation was that for, for that was that it was supposed to convey a feeling of anxiousness Mm -hmm. just like are we out of the woods yet you know and so when i heard that i was just like okay i'm totally on board now i get that and i love i love that idea so that's what i kind of need i kind of need an explanation of why we're just saying the same thing over and over again Mm -hmm. so yeah what did you think about the uh the phone call in the bridge of the song (laughs) um I think it's definitely interesting. A lot of people think it's really weird. Um, I've heard so many people like make jokes about it. But I think that was really her trying to be like, I'm not who I was and like get over it. Because I feel like, um, and this is like a general kind of thing. You see a lot of like people who like become famous when they're younger. Because like obviously, you know, like when you're younger and as you get older, you kind of go through a change. And a lot of times the media like, never really portrays those changes well i mean think like britney spears like all the way back but even like miley cyrus and stuff and i feel like this was taylor being like this is who i am now get over it like that like she doesn't like that part like who i was like doesn't exist anymore okay Mm -hmm. great yeah i mean we saw that with miley cyrus and it was kind of too much with miley cyrus I was about to say, I feel like my, I mean, Miley's transformation was definitely in a whole other ballpark than Taylor Swift's, um, and then a whole lot of other people, but it's kind of like the same thing. I just feel like you constantly see that theme of, I mean, like, even like Selena Gomez and like Demi Lovato, like had these ma- massive changes. I mean, like, if you look at their music from the starts of their career to where they are now, they're 100% different. But I feel like a lot of people just have that image of like the stars as they were. And it's really hard for them to be like, like keep doing that same kind of music when it's like, 
like especially for like Taylor Swift, she's like, all of this like crap is happening to me. All of these people are telling like these, you know, like lies or like spreading these things that like aren't about me. Like, so it's hard. F- I feel like it would be like hard to like stay that same person. And so I feel like this is her statement of being like, this is who I am now. And like, I'm not who I once was. And like, you're just going to have to get over that. Yeah. I mean, without even going into the deeper meanings, I think that that part of the song is what makes the song memorable. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that people are quoting the heck out of that part of the song and just saying it all all the time, even if you're quoting it and making fun of it, at least it's being quoted. You know, that's what makes the the song so memorable. Like I just said, Um, I loved it. As soon as I heard it, I was like, that's the best part of the song. I mean, besides the pre-chorus, but like just for content wise, I was like, that's definitely the best part of the song. And people are like, it's so different. And I'm like, really? Because Bad Blood had a had a thing in the middle of it where she kind of talks. And then Blank Space had a a moment in the middle where she kind of talks instead of sings. You know, boys only want love when it's torture. So like it really isn't that out of character for her to do something like that. Well, and I feel like the whole point of this reputation album and like not like the whole point but like a big part of it is it it is different yeah and because she's not the same person yeah so anyway let's go into the music video that came out a few days later i mean there is there's so many references in that video that we're not even i'm not even gonna go into any of them because we'll be here forever that was for me i think the music video is what really like not like changed my mind because i didn't like hate the song at first i was just kind of like okay but like i don't know what the music video just like opened my eyes and i was like this is a really good song (laughs) yeah it's amazing what like just explanation can do well that was and i feel like everything like what she wanted it to mean it just like clicked for me and i was like i totally get it Mm mm-hmm yeah And the mountain of Taylor's was genius. I can't even, like, begin. When I saw all the, the, like, mountain of people climbing up to get to the reputation Taylor, I was just like, I turned to my mom because we were watching it on live television. And I was like, is that old versions of Taylor? And I was just like, oh, my God, mom, that's fearless Taylor. And she was like, what are you talking about? And but like, I was just like, oh, my God, it's shake it off, Taylor. Like, that was such a huge moment for me in the music video when like they showed all the old taylors and i was just like taylor swift take all my money the first one i recognized was you belong with me taylor in the like uh junior jewels shirt yeah yeah and the the red circus ring master taylor or whatever yeah 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 that was awesome that's good I feel like the music video was just, like, it just knocked it out of the park. Like, yeah. so I've heard so many people be like, oh, it was so weird. And I'm like, no, it was so good. Like, Well, here's the thing about that music video is that if you're a casual fan and you watch it, it's weird. But if you're actually a fan of Taylor Swift and you watch it, it's brilliant. And I think that's kind of what she was going for because she doesn't want any of those, you know, people that just watch the videos to make fun of her to understand the true meaning this was a video for the fans well that's and i think because like her whole thing especially like the last little bit is like you know like the haters you know like whatever like she's there for like the people that care yeah that like last part i died which part the part at the end where they're all talking oh yeah (laughs) yeah so anyway, what I was saying, <laughs> um, like, I feel like that was her point was just to be like, the haters aren't going to understand it. The people who don't care aren't going to understand it. But like the people that I really care about and the people that I want to know and that I want to like know who like have this reputation, like I want them to know like this me, like they're going to understand it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. everyone else like, I don't care. Yeah. It's awesome. It's but like, just to talk a little bit about that end part. That's brilliant. Like, it was so meta and just, like, so amazing. Like, uh, what's my favorite one? The, um, oh, there she goes again. Or, there she goes, playing the victim again. Brilliant. It, like, that took the music video from, like, here 
to here for me. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. I would uh, appreciate... What what was it? I appreciate being excluded from this narrative. Shut up! (laughs) So good. So anyway, let's move into Ready For It, which came out a week after Look What You Made Me Do, which was extremely surprising. And yeah, I don't know if this was the intention, but it seemed like she was kind of trying to cover it up. Cover up the fact that Look What You Made Me Do was kind of weird. I don't think she needed to. It could have stood alone, but... Mm-hmm. That's how it kind of came off. Well, it's just really weird because she, the singles came out so close together, and I like. Well, no actually, it oh. it wasn't technically a single yet. It became a single when she got the music video. So, Ready for It was kind of a promotional release. Uh, okay. Until you know yesterday. See that for me was just kind of weird, because it's like she like just released i feel like she almost like didn't give look what you made me do like enough time to really like impact everyone because then all of a sudden it was just like here's this is wrong (laughs) yeah and you're like oh okay although i i i almost forgot to mention look what you made me do music video broke the record for most viewed video of youtube history in the first 24 hours not just music video video which she also broke (laughs) obviously but most viewed video in the first 24 hours it's pretty good that's freaking insane i i think that's it oh my god what if it's not i'm i'm like kind of tired and like (sighs) keep talking i don't know what else to say (laughs) we're talking about ready for it how do you like the Um. rapping It's interesting. It actually, like, doesn't bother me. Like, it was weird at first because I'm like, this is Taylor Swift. Like, literally, like, the first song of hers I listened to was, like, Teardrops on My Guitar and now she's rapping. Aww. But, what like... Baby. I, Sorry. I like it. I mean, it's definitely different. But, again, I think that's what she was going for. Mm-hmm. And it's not, like, 100% rapping, you know? It's not like she went out there and was like... <laughs> you know and she starts like she starts like beatboxing and like dance break dancing on her head or something oh my god (laughs) doing like some like eminem lyrics or something i don't know i don't listen to raps (laughs) you know you know because like you better lose yourself in the moment you own it is that the only song you know yep (laughs) (laughs) you know like Honestly, like, the first part just sounds like she's talking. Like, it's not like she, like, for me, it doesn't even sound like rap. It's just like she's like, knew he was a killer. But, like, it still has that kind of, like, singing vibe to mm-hmm. it. She so, pulls it off. Like, oh, my God. I don't know how she. Yeah, she doesn't. Hang rap. on. Look what you made me do is playing somewhere and I can't find her. Oh, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Unexpected Taylor. <laughs> she's everywhere. Okay, hang on. Broke the same 24-hour record with Vivo. Uh, God, we, we're we not prepared for this. I'm sorry, we? I'm prepared. I have notes. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, I wrote notes on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I really wanted... I, like, went back... Because I was so confused by the Ready for It video when I watched it this morning. So I, like, went and read things. So I, like, wrote down some, like, the analysis behind it. Okay, hold off on that, though, because I'm still trying to get through the timeline, and I found it. Oh, yeah. um, the video holds the title of the most YouTube global streams in a 24-hour period with 43.2 million views. Holy Good job, Tay Tay. Uh, okay, so now let's move on to Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It came about, I think it came exactly a month later from Re- Ready For It, I believe. Mm-hmm. First reaction to Gorgeous. It's catchy. But somehow it just didn't, like, after Look What You May Be Doing Ready For It, for some reason it just, like, didn't, it was just kind of like, meh. Like, for me it was one of those, like, Taylor Swift songs that you, like, hear and you're like, eh. Like, if it comes on, like, when I'm listening to the album, like, okay. But it's not, like, the song that I'm, like, gonna listen to on repeat for, like, days. Mm-hmm. You know? 
the first thing I thought when I heard Gorgeous, well, the first, first thing I thought before she even started singing was the intro sounded like a ringtone from like a cell phone, the <laughs> boo doo doo boo boo doo 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 or whatever it goes. Um, that didn't sound very good. But my second thought was these lyrics are not Taylor Swift. And I'm not talking about the, like the content of the lyrics, but the like what is this like you're so gorgeous it makes me so mad i was like that is not exactly like to the complexity complexity of like wildest dreams here you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i'm like oh okay so like you make me so happy it turns back to sad i just at first i was just like and then you know I listened to it a few more times and I thought maybe it's kind of a like a stay 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 situation which was on red and it was sandwiched in between two really heavy songs like I think it was sandwiched in between all too well and this is the last time I want to say it was those two and honestly it was so needed and it was just an easy like light song that just kind of like made you stop crying for a little bit (laughs) after all too well so if if that's what gorgeous does then i get it but i feel like we're really missing some context here because if it's not then i'm just kind of like what is this well that's and like after hearing you say that half of me almost thinks that like she did want to release like a kind of simpler song because if you really look back at it like look what she made me doing ready for it are kind of heavier songs and so, like, this might almost be her, like, like a break for us in, like, a sense. Yeah. That I mean, I weird. was talking about, like, the official track list of Red. Yeah. I know. But I'm just saying, like, why she would release, like, these singles in this order, I think, is that, like... I was so shocked and a little confused when she said she was releasing Gorgeous. Yeah, three singles. We didn't need it. Well, it's not a single, but, like, three songs released seemed like okay hold hold back a little bit for the album but Mm -hmm. yeah um i'm really coming around on gorgeous particularly today i had a breakthrough where i was just like i actually really like gorgeous not gonna lie i think my favorite part of that song is the uh the what does it go whiskey on ice whiskey on ice sunset and vines that part of it it it's the pre-chorus again but yeah i liked I that i'm still at 100 percent sold on it i don't think it'll ever be my favorite song on reputation but it's it's Mm-mm. okay it's solid i don't think it'll ever be one of my favorites i mean like i don't know it just doesn't it doesn't do me it doesn't get me yeah which worries me a little bit because I mean it wouldn't worry me if it was just on reputation and I'm just it's November 10th I'm listening to the album it's the eighth track okay cool but it worries me that she decides to release this one third Mm -hmm. and I know that we shouldn't compare Taylor's albums because honestly you you just can't really compare them because they're always so different and offer something new but let's think about the first three um singles off or you know songs released off 1989 shake it off blank space style i mean that's just like a one two three punch right there like Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know and gorgeous is no style (laughs) but whatever so last night ready for music video what did you think? Um, honestly, at first, it kind of gave me a Star Wars vibe. I don't know if that was just because I was thinking about Star Wars and having new movies coming out. Like, I don't Han know. Solo. If, if, if that was it. or But it did. It kind of gave me that, like, Star Warsy theme. Like, sci-fi, you know, like, that whole thing. I was it was, like, like underground, like, industrial. Mm. See, I almost thought, like, spaceship. Yeah, because of all those weird, like robot things yeah well and she almost reminded me of like a feminine darth vader like if leia went bad or if ray goes bad who knows actually oh my god okay continue but i that's almost exactly what i wanted to talk about (laughs) um and honestly like so i watched the whole thing through 
and literally like i think i finished and i was like that was good but what the hell did i just watch (laughs) because like i really didn't understand like what any of the what happened in the music video had to do with the song (laughs) or like what it meant in general i was just like cool what (laughs) yeah so i mean even before it came out there was a trailer um for it yeah there was a teaser and they showed the bodysuit you know the robot kind of like naked robot bodysuit and the amount of outrage that came about that stupid bodysuit let me just vent for one second there is something wrong with the world where kanye west can literally order a life-size wax naked replica of taylor swift without her permission and put it in a music video and nobody cares about that everyone's just like oh he's such a like a artistic genius and taylor uses her own body and everyone jumps down taylor swift's throat (laughs) that's messed up sounds about right i just like it's like oh taylor swift is like trying too hard she's like it's like too sexualized i was just like it's her own body what about the massive orgy that was in Kanye West's famous music video. What about Miley Cyrus sing- swinging naked on Breaking Ball? Yeah, but, I mean, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean. I mean, and honestly, um, sh- Taylor released what the bodysuit looks like without all the, you know, CGI and all that stuff. And it's one of the most covering uh, outfits I think she's ever worn. <laughs> which is ironic. It's the probably the least revealing outfit Taylor Swift has ever worn, but yeah. it's kind of funny. I mean, it's, it's not funny. It's it's sad and it makes me upset. But yeah, I had to do some research to understand it better. To be honest, I thought it was gonna be better because the majority of the music video is evil Sith Lord Taylor staring at naked Taylor, <laughs> cyborg Taylor. Yeah, just staring at each other with a glass in the middle. I mean, I know all the references to Out of the Woods, Blank Space, White Horse. I I got all those, Mm -hmm. honestly, like the first time I saw it. And the coolest explanation I've heard actually came off Tumblr. And Taylor liked it on Tumblr. So I know that this person was, you know, close to what she was going for. Was that Taylor keeps trying to... the, um, The naked Taylor is the real Taylor. And the... Sith Lord Taylor is the, um, the media's portrayal of her, like dark and portrayal, yeah. Sith Lord, I mean, Naked Taylor keeps trying to, like, get weapons and tries to, like, you know, blow up the weapons. She even has this, like, weird, like, robotic horse thing. She's trying all these different things to fight what the media's portrayal is and the only thing the thing that ends up getting her out of the glass box is her voice when she finally sings Mm -hmm. and i loved that that read of it because i was just like yes because people can say anything but they cannot deny the fact that taylor is a great artist and she's the the most influential influential artist of i think our generation true fair So yeah, I mean, the one other thing about the video is that when the music, when the actual song came out, everyone was like, okay, so it's about her boyfriend, it's about, you know, they had all these things, but a lot of them were like, oh, it's about her current boyfriend, and how, like, you know, well, whatever, just just look up the lyrics, and then the video came out, and it was, like, not about that at all, so that kind of shook me, I was just like, okay, the lyrics didn't indicate anything that this video has yeah. so that kind of might have been one of the things that messed people up yeah that messed me up because i definitely like went into it not expecting evil that. cyborg like sith lord and it's just kind of like oh okay yeah. there was a, i mean yeah whatever and the thing about when you said ray um this whole new taylor quote new taylor is reminding me of like you know how, like, you have this hero, and you always have this little wish to, that she, he or she will go bad, mm-hmm. and you just kind of want to see, like, the deliciously evil side of them, but you always want them to go back to the, to the good side? That's kind of what I feel like right now. Like, I'm enjoying this evil, edgy, like, 
reputation Taylor, but I think in the long term, I want 1989 Taylor back. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you know? I don't know. I feel like I want to hear the full album well, yeah, before yeah, I make yeah. judgments on that. I'm not saying anytime soon. Like, I'll wait, like, two or three years, but, like, I don't want this to be the last thing. Okay. Gotcha. We know Taylor as, you know, mm-hmm. I want like another shake it off sometime in the future. Gotcha. And so I don't know what your notes say, but my final thing that I kind of wanted to say was if you are on the fence about reputation, as I was, as I have kind of been struggling with, because I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan and I've been waiting for this. And so I almost felt a little let down with this. This quote or this realization that I'm about to say completely changed the way I thought about reputation and now I'm just totally on board. (laughs) Reputation is the dark night to 1989's bright day. Oh, yeah. I saw you posted that on Twitter. Yeah. Reputation is like the nighttime album and 1989 is the daytime album. And once that like realization came over me and that kind of sunk in i was like yes i can do this let's go 1989 i mean wow um reputation Mm -hmm. how do you feel about that i like it i mean i definitely kind of see like the validity in that i mean even the cover arts like 89 has like this kind of like hazy bright look to it and reputation is just this really crisp like, like black and white black yeah. and white edgy mm-hmm. so yeah so we wanted to get all that out there before november 10th and we're probably gonna you know get another one out there about taylor the after november album. 10th yeah. <laughs> after i've listened to the album a few times <laughs> like 20 times yeah let's be honest <laughs> thoroughly analyzed every single song and every single word as soon as i know all the words to every song we'll we'll be back (laughs) of course yeah all right and you have anything else you want to say not really you pretty much covered everything that i had sweet yay signing off all right everyone